Hi, I'm Steve Bogash. I'm a horticulture educator researcher with Penn State Cooperative Extension. We're here at the Penn State Southeast Agriculture Research and Extension Center in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, and we're looking into one of the high tunnels here at the farm. This is a Haygrove Super Solo. It's 25 feet long, and we build it here to 128 feet. This is one of our tomato variety trials. This year, our big focus was looking at leaf mold. Leaf mold is one of those high tunnel problems, and it's really specific to high tunnels, that we know that there are some resistances out there to specific varieties of tomatoes. Other ones are completely susceptible. So behind me, we have 20 varieties of round reds, determinant slicer tomatoes. And what we were trying to figure out is which varieties are more susceptible, less susceptible, resistant, tolerant to leaf mold. So one of the challenges we had is this tunnel was low with bacterial canker last year. It actually ruined the tomato trial that we had in here last year, but we needed to go back in here again this year. So there's a long series of practices that we know help to control bacterial canker, but yet the, one of the ideas is you should be waiting at least three years before you come back in. This is one of those soil-borne diseases. It lives on organic matter in the ground. You've got to wait for all that organic matter to decay. We didn't have the time to wait. So in dealing with Ron Fisher from BioSafe, we looked at a new way of getting the soil ready. What we did, um, once we had fertilized the tunnel, worked up the ground, laid, that, laid our beds, we then injected TerraClean at two gallons to the acre under the plastic. We then drenched the soil and the plastic using a proportional injector using that same product, waited four hours, put the Terra Grow mix of biologicals in, then planted the next day. We've lost absolutely no plants to bacterial canker. That's almost unheard of coming into a second year on this. We've lost no plants to bacterial canker in this tunnel this year. They were all planted approximately May 1. We are now at the end of September. The plants are still going strong. In addition, on the way here, while we have done a full canker management program, new wooden stakes, which we recommend very highly, we've used ActiGuard early in the cycle. The PHI on ActiGuard doesn't allow us to use it very long, so we only used it a few times in the beginning. On the off weeks when we weren't putting the Terra products in, which we did every two weeks, we also injected Regalia in at four quarts to the acre. So they had a strong foliar program of Regalia and copper. Um, we also used use this high injected program of the Terra products. We've had actually no bacterial disease in here whatsoever. That's no speck, spot, or canker throughout the entire season. In addition, we've inoculated this tunnel twice with leaf mold. Um, it was bred in the Penn State Pathology Laboratory. We brought it down here. We increased the humidity by applying a lot of spray water in here, closed up the sides, applied it. The first time we had absolutely no leaf mold whatsoever. The conditions were a little dry outside and hot, so it wasn't ideal. A month later, we had a couple rainy days in a row, so we came in and applied leaf mold again. I could not get any leaf mold to grow in here whatsoever. What we're thinking at this point is that we had pushed the SAR response so hard with all the materials, the ActiGuard, the Regalia, the Terra materials, we had put the plant's defenses at the highest level possible so we could not get any leaf mold in here, and yet that's what the trial was all about. We eliminated the canker, which was a wonderful thing to do, but we couldn't get leaf mold. So for a grower, this is a really big advantage. It didn't work very well for us because we needed leaf mold in here. So about a month ago, we stopped using all of the materials that push this systemic response. We stopped using Regalia in here. We stopped using the Terra products. And now we have finally got leaf mold. Now we do have conditions that are a little bit more conducive to it, but we should have at least seen some leaf mold deep in the canopy early on. And the thought is, is that we just simply had over pushed the planet, the plant's um, own resistance mechanisms to the point that we could not get any infection infection. One of the concerns that a lot of people have with using all these SAR materials is that you do get a yield drag, and a lot of that's been documented in a lot of scientific literature. We do a lot of things in here to help get past that. One is we keep the nutrients at the highest level. We do a lot of tissue testing and soil testing. I also apply products like Stimplex and Green Stim in here. Both of those products have cytokines in them, and they will help push more flowers. 
and that combination helps to balance out. It won't do a full balance out, but that helps to balance it out. That gets us to the now the end of September. We're going to harvest for at least two more weeks in here, and we're still getting a high percentage of number one fruits on plants that have been in the ground since May 1, and these are determinant plants.